Hello friends. So we will continue our discussion with uh, the subject of communication systems. So previously we were discussing about the classification of uh, electronic communication systems on the basis of various uh, parameters. So we discussed classification on the basis of direction of communication. There is simplex half duplex and full duplex communication modes. So in this video we are going to discuss uh, the classification on the basis of nature of the signal which is involved in the transmission and reception. So three ways in which we can uh, classify direction of communication, nature of signal, technique of transmission. So on the basis of nature of the signal which is used in transmission and reception communication systems can be classified as analog communication systems and digital communication systems okay so we all know the difference between analog and digital let us just uh, again recollect all those things so we all know analog signals are continuous okay which means that the value of the signal at each and every point of time it exists it is it is defined okay and it can take up any value from zero to infinity and the amplitude values of the signal is not limited okay so the amplitude frequency and phase can take any value in analog signals like in this case the signal values, the amplitude values, they are defined at each and every point of time. Okay, at any given point of time, the signal exists. The value, the amplitude value is defined. So this is what uh, analog signal is. Whereas digital signal, the digital signals, they are defined at specific points, specific distinct distinct points at specific time instance and they can have fixed values okay they cannot take any value within uh, any range they have to have fixed values okay and it has certain purpose why uh, they have fixed values which we'll discuss later when we'll discuss about digital communication systems so mostly uh, when we uh, represent a digital signal we assign two values a logic high and a logic low values which is defined by 0 and 1 so mostly they are represented in the form of pulse signals of constant amplitude frequency and phase and there is a whole process which involves in the conversion of uh, analog signals to digital signals which involves three steps that is sampling quantization and encoding so in the sampling process, samples of the signal at specific points uh, defined by the Nyquist criteria uh, it is taken which converts it into a discrete time signal and then through quantization and encoding we convert it into pulse signal. So this analog signal can be converted into digital signal through sampling, quantization and encoding to form this pulse signal. And then uh, specific transmission techniques are used for uh, the transmission of analog and digital signals in communication, the whole communication system which is called as modulation. In this video we are not going to discuss about modulation in detail but just know that modulation is basically the process of changing the signal characteristics that is amplitude, frequency and phase of a carrier signal with respect to the original information containing signal which is called as message or modulating signal. So this message or modulating signal which is the original information which is to be transmitted it alters the characteristics of a uh, carrier signal high energy signal and the characteristics which are changed are amplitude frequency and phase so in general <clears throat> there are two types of modulation which is analog modulation 
uh, which involves analog signals which can be classified as amplitude modulation frequency modulation phase modulation then pulse amplitude modulation pulse width modulation pulse position modulation and then digital modulation which involves pulse code modulation and delta modulation so there are certain advantages and disadvantages that are associated with both analog and digital modulation for example the advantages of analog communication is that low bandwidth is required and the circuitry that is involved at both the transmitter and receiver side that is simple okay it is not very complicated whereas this uh, the disadvantages are that it uh, the noise and distortion uh, is very high encoding of signal is not possible repeaters that is amplifiers which strengthen the signal characteristics at various points between the transmitter and receiver they cannot be used whereas it can be used in digital communication so the advantages of digital communication is just the opposite of that of analog communication noise and distortion is less repeaters can be used encoding of signal is possible which uh, which helps in uh, you know uh, confidential information which is to be transmitted from one point to another it can be done with uh, in a in a good way without any leakage of information okay through encoding techniques disadvantage is that the circuitry which is involved is very complicated and is very costly uh, and uh, the bandwidth which is required for digital communication systems it is very high the frequency spectrum the frequency range is very high so here we have discussed in a uh, simple and short way the classification of communication systems on the basis of nature of signal that is analog communication systems and digital communication systems so we'll be discussing each of these in detail and there's uh, you know a lot of things are involved in each of the each of these uh, uh, subcategories is a separate subject in itself actually okay so we'll be discussing that but before going into detail we should have a good idea in a, in a simple and short way what uh, the whole thing there is to cover so this is about classification on the basis of nature of signal analog and digital communication systems